All right now what? <laughs> Boss, Eli's DNA test. We're looking for the kids. Okay, now. Lampivus, but there's still no sign of them. We don't know if the chopper pilot is alive either. What have we gone and put in the hands of those kids? We don't know how bad this is until we find them. Also, regarding our concerns about Eli, I finished looking into whether or not he's a product of that project. I have an answer. Okay, that. that's what I was waiting for. Put it on tape. Give it a listen. Okay. I wonder, do I have any other missions, by the way? Boss, I've updated the mission list. We've received some new job offers. The details are on your iDroid. Roger. All right, I want to go back in, into the uh, chopper. I'll listen to that tape. I was wondering because I, I remember they mentioned they're like, "Oh, we're going to conduct a DNA test on him." And the, uh, Miller's or Osla, whoever, was like, "Oh, I'll let you know as soon as we know the results." So now we know now. All right. But I mean, it's pretty obvious that it's that it's that who he is, right? I could tell from the, like the first moment that we saw him. I also don't know what Psycho Mantis has connected to all this, or like what his origins are. If that even is who he actually is, but I mean, come on, it has to be, right? Check it out here. About Eli hijacking Salanthropus. We know how he got it moving. It was Emmerich. He used the kids in the staff living quarters to carry out his repairs. We got the details on tape. You're gonna wanna hear this. Okay. So let's <laughs> all the uh, next um, progressions in the story are on tapes, I guess. So let's go. I guess let's listen to at least those ones. Informant's report. Origins and XOF. This is probably what we got from uh, that little uh, film canister thing. Oh, wait, there's some other stuff over here. Let's see. Cooperating with Eli. That's the one we just got. Eli's DNA test. There's also this and this. These three. Uh, okay. I guess we'll go with these. We finished First. decoding the informant's report. That floating kid we've run into a few times now. Looks like he was a test subject in oh, clinical okay. experiments. So we're going to get some the background Soviets on Psycho here. The third boy. The third boy was brought to a lab on the outskirts of Moscow from Czechoslovakia, after which he was due to be sent to a research center in Leningrad, then Siberia, and finally an academic town in Novosibirsk. It doesn't Sibirsk. appear that the researchers witnessed the talents we've seen from him, but nevertheless, he was quite the popular subject. His latent cognitive abilities suddenly awoke en route to Moscow. According to the report, the third boy was easily influenced by other individuals' biofields. Evil thoughts, in particular. They affected his mind like a virus. Extreme anger or resentment, motives for revenge, in other words. Now, during the transport flight to Moscow, the boy was exposed to a powerful mental energy field coming from a certain individual. Ever since, being conscious of his powers, he's become a sort of energy generator. What's unique about him is the way his acute telepathic abilities get taken over by another person's will. The boy began to physically parasitize individuals experiencing extreme anger and codify the host's desires. This includes amplifying the host's natural strengths. Or, in accordance with the host's desires, he can also implant program code in another individual, making them a puppet, essentially. Okay. Human neural synapses transmit weak electrical currents. That's what he did to Merrill in uh, These electrical currents, though, that would be a solid one. difficult to observe, warp the magnetic field outside the body. The third boy is able to pick up these weak fluctuations. 
Contrary to psychotronics, which involves controlling the human mind, his abilities as a receptor are too high. The emotions he picks up from another individual are amplified and unleashed into his body as they recur in his brain. They turn into microwaves, which then affect the physical world, triggering paranormal phenomena like the spontaneous combustion of organic matter or psychokinesis, you know, moving an object without touching it. There's one other thing. While he's parasitizing a host, the boy's ego gets shut away, allowing the will of the host to take control of his powers, like some annoying static drowning out your own voice. That means he isn't responsible for what's been happening. Somebody's extreme anger has manifested through the third boy's powers in ways none of us could have predicted. Okay. Which would mean Eli's. this was going on somewhere around us. Looking back on it, a lot of things. Normally I wouldn't listen to these tapes um, the you know, on camera, but these ones are important, so. They both came to life thanks and I think I have to to progress powers. into the last couple Everything of missions. Everything been happening through him as a catalyst. We first saw him in the hospital on Cyprus. The boy parasitizing the man on fire's desire for revenge gave him his new abilities in return. He next appeared at the Hamid fighter's fort where the honeybee was hidden. There, the boy parasitized Skullface's vengeful mind. He controlled Sahalanthropus, making it do whatever Skullface wanted. Same goes for when we extracted Emmerich onto the chopper. When he appeared at the Devil's House in Central Africa, Skullface's will controlled the man on fire via the third boy's powers. Everything is clear up to this point. <laughs> what? But even the informant couldn't pinpoint who the host was in the cave within Serac power plant. Sahalanthropus suddenly became active, then crushed not only the man on fire, but Skullface as well. Surely neither of them could have been the host. Eli, then. Who else was at that location and bore anger more extreme than either of them? Whose will was controlling Sahalanthropus? According to the report, emotions transmitted in children's brains affect the surrounding magnetic field more strongly. Cerebral nerves are covered with insulation called myelin. So it's like to increase impulse. The psychomantis latches onto someone who has extreme anger emotions. The then that, that person's emotions go back onto psychomantis. So and that it's basically through that psychomantis acts Children out that person's will. Desire for revenge <laughs> I guess that's what I'm getting you. from it. I can think of only one. Eli. We don't know what kind of life he's had, but the resentment he's shown toward adults is nothing short of extraordinary. The third boy resonated with Eli's mind. Okay. That means Eli bore the strongest animosity of all individuals within the boy's reception range, estimated to be a three-mile radius, beating out even Volgan and Skullface. Okay, so he latches on to whoever has, like, the strongest anger or emotions in an area. The third boy showed an interest in Shabani. That must have been his ego making a rare appearance. He may possess abilities far beyond anyone else in the world, but he's still a kid. Maybe them both being kids was enough to bring them together. And if so, maybe with Eli, he isn't feeding off him, but acting in symbiosis with him. <laughs> this is very Metal Gear type stuff, that's for sure. If we look at the location and time that his plane went down, we can make a pretty good guess. When the plane experienced the first anomaly, it gave an accurate report of its position to a control tower. Due north of the Black Sea, 125 miles east of Kiev. Dead south in the Black Sea is Cyprus's green line. So the plane's position was directly north of the hospital where you'd been asleep for nine years. And this anomaly was reported at exactly the same time that you woke up. The plane was enveloped in flame from the inside out. The fuselage burnt to ashes. There were no survivors, at least not publicly admitted. Your thoughts formed a synchronicity with the boy's psyche and were amplified inside okay. his brain. So he's the one. That would have been more than enough to trigger his abilities. Who made me get out of the coma? Age was like a big bang in his head. Blowing the lid off and his, his plane was happened to be going over my hospital, and that triggered his powers. Side of Moscow, where Volgan was comatose. There, Volgan's thoughts resonated with the boy, and he was awakened. Volgan became the man on fire, hell bent on getting revenge on you. His instincts led him straight to you. 
Skullface knew Volgan from Operation Snake Eater, or perhaps from even before. That's Metal Gear Solid 3. this pair of extraordinaries, he discovered the hospital and sent his assassin and XOF. That's uh, quiet. Was probably watching the situation from close by. Then, realizing how useful these two test subjects could be, he approached them. Reacting to Skullface's thirst for revenge, this time the boy let Skullface's will control Volgan. Volgan, at times driven by personal revenge, at times through Skullface's will, kept on moving, <laughs> though his body so sometimes... was more than dead meat. Perhaps there were moments where even your thoughts affected him as well. But without the boy's power, it was like the plug had been pulled from the socket. <laughs> so there were times the Everything Manfire was controlling was himself, anger, sometimes Skullface was controlling him. Revenge. This, this is, is super weird. Report sums things up. Both the third boy and the man on fire were originally test subjects of paranormal research for military applications. Like telekinetically controlling the leader of an enemy nation and making him launch a nuke. Or stopping the heart of someone on the wrong side of the Berlin Wall. Experimenting with latent human abilities. They were used as tools of the Cold War. The boy's only crime was being born with unique gifts. But he was sacrificed on the altar of war. His life reduced to slavery under other people's wills. Turned into a living weapon with no will of his own. And eventually the only emotion he could feel must have been the desire to get revenge for the hand he'd been dealt. Hmm. Boss, it's you that awakened the boy's powers. But there's more to it than that. I guess the anger emanating from you was something he could truly relate to. <laughs> okay. Super weird and <laughs> confusing, but what to expect, I guess. All right, let's check out this one. Skullface's Skull Origins. Real Origins. Name unknown. Born in Hungary, more specifically northern Transylvania after it reverted to Hungary from Romania. While he was young, the country allied with Germany is part of the Axis powers. Yeah, I mean, I'll definitely get a lot more background by listening to all these, but for now I'm just going to listen to the important ones. I'll listen to the other ones just off camera, probably. There's a lot here that I haven't yet. Just like he said, time and again the country was ruled by a foreign tongue. When he was a young boy, he lost his native language. The bedrock for any developing child. His country... His family, his face, his identity, everything was stolen from him. All he had left was his skull. Skullface first tried his hand at espionage during all the chaos from the war. Agents, military officials, and soldiers who operated out of Hungary during the war vanished over the course of several months. This Soviet spy hunt rocked the counter-intel world. Mysterious fatal illnesses, accidental deaths, drownings, people having strokes behind closed doors. Just like Stalin, no one knew who was behind it. So Skullface killed all Stalin? Do was look for who had the motive. They were all taken out by a man without a face. And now we've got an idea of how he did it too. He got revenge for his people, but he wasn't finished. Skullface defected to the West, eventually ended up with the SAS. That's where he met Zero. It's possible he began planning this whole thing back then. It's hard to say. In any case, Zero made him his XO. He always did have a thing for oddballs. But this one was set to lead a unit no one else would know about. XOF? When Zero created Fox. He also formed XOF as a support team. An unconventional special forces unit designed to support Fox, make it stronger. With Skullface given the orders. Zero never even told the boss about it. Nor the CIA, naturally. If Fox was Zero's silver bullet, XOF was the recoil when he pulled the trigger. Just like Newton's third law. While you were with Fox, Skullface was operating behind the scenes. Sometimes as your backup, Sometimes as a mole or a scout. Sometimes as your cleanup crew. Fox's tail. Making sure the mission succeeded and that you survived. Okay. <laughs> so he was behind the scenes this whole time. Doing other stuff during the events of like maybe Metal Gear Solid 3 or whatnot. Alright, we got two more. A DNA test and then something about uh, Emmerich helping Eli escape. 
got the results of Eli's genetic tests, we can finally put this worry behind us. We used the PCR technique and conducted DNA fingerprinting of the copied DNA sequences. Neither is mainstream science yet, but the concepts and procedures are sound. Both tests say there is 0% chance that the two of you are blood relatives. What? Meaning the results are negative. He's not your son, nor is he your clone. He's just another person. I don't think I believe that. It was 12 years ago that Zero made plans to clone you. Eli's age and appearance certainly are a good fit. I admit the first time I saw him, I did a double take. But it looks like we were worried for nothing. Eli isn't your clone. Though you might still have one somewhere out there. But if Eli snake? The boss Solid the snake? Power, why does he seem so obsessed with him? Not to mention having one hell of an attitude for his age. I don't know. Learning the truth about himself, cursing the fact he's a clone, bearing a grudge against selfish adults, and coming to hate who he was cloned from. Big boss. If that were really the case, I could understand it. I might even feel a bit sorry for him. <sighs> but no clone could have a totally different DNA fingerprint. And the test left no room for error. You yourself were there when we drew Eli's blood sample. Come to think of it, when we went to OKB Zero, he'd snuck onto a chopper and was there. Yeah. He was acting strange even then. Or actually from a little before that time. That was exactly when we began these tests. Maybe he suspected something when we drew the sample. Not knowing what we were doing to him. And becoming mistrustful of us. Hard to say. Eli's had an attitude problem from day one. Hmm. So what is he then? I wonder if it's because well, Psycho Mantis had like that connection we'll with him. Get him to open up more first. Yeah, I don't believe for a second that <laughs> that's not that he's not Liquid Snake. All right, this probably gives some more background on him. You know, yeah, like I said, I'll probably listen to all these eventually. All right, so we just have this one about Huey cooperating with Eli for some reason. What was your goal in having the children repair Sahalanthropus? I just answered their questions. I had no idea they would actually try to fix it. I mean, can you imagine a child piloting it? Oh, sure. Easily. It wouldn't work. Well, I bet it's just like riding a bike. I said it didn't work. It... Who did you try? I, I didn't. Did you put your son in it? Uh, we never did that. His I thought he never saw his son. Cow, wasn't it? I thought you said you never saw his face. Yeah. But you made him pilot Sahalanthropus. You used him in your experiments. So he did he see him. He wanted to get in. Man, he lost about everything. It was such a short time we had. He so said he's never seen his face and he was crying. We were happy. You're still happy now. Changing your lies to suit the listener and getting by slipping through the cracks. Building layer upon layer of convenient stories until nothing means anything to you anymore. You're happy all the time because you don't even notice you're doing it. Think hard. Who are you really? You're not a victim and you're not the silent majority. You're a perpetrator and a petty <laughs> hypocrite. Quiet, getting into those perver perverted positions suffer. behind the scenes it's there. The other way around. Okay. That's all of this. So now what? I think I might have to go just do another uh, side op, because that's what I've been doing. I've done like like when I haven't had any actual main missions left. I listen to some important cassette tapes, do a side op, then it drops me into another one. Uh, let's see which ones we have. I'm not sure if I'll do it. Take a break and do it. What? Let's see. Uh, which one sounds fun? No, we'll just do it now. We'll see, what, see if we get something after it. Eliminate the armored vehicle unit. That sounds okay. Or the heavy infantry. There's these things that I could do too. They, I think they affect the, um, the side quest with pause, which maybe I could wrap up. Mm, you know what? Okay. Maybe we'll go do that. Because that might be something I want to complete. I'm not sure if I do yet. To Central Africa. Sure. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, gotta do it non-lethal. So. 
I'm guessing uh, the sleeping gas grenades that I have, though, are probably going to help me here. All right, let's do it. Deploying. Hopefully, uh, this won't be too difficult. I've done two of these before. And then hopefully we get another main story mission after this, since we listened to all those tapes and whatnot, too. Or I wonder if we just went back to Mother Base if something would have happened. I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I'm going to check these things out. I've done two of them. I don't know if I brought the other picture back to pause. The oh. mission, mission list. No way not. He did that. He did do that before. I got some missions here that are the uh, harder versions of previous missions, but I don't think I'm really going to do those. I'd rather just stick with the new story missions to get to the ending here. Oh, we can develop some more platforms. I'd rather make this one, though, support. Get that all the way up. So I can at least have all of them at level 3. I don't know, though. Yeah, right? We still don't have any other story missions yet. See, these ones, the ones in parentheses with the brackets, that's what that means. They're all, uh, repeats. Alright, uh, so this dude is somewhere in there. Oh, I should have given her the, uh, Trank sniper rifle. Maybe she could have taken this guy out for me. Right, let me, uh... get up here if I tell her to shoot the grenade will it will it create like a sleep gas like cloud tell her to go there in the middle I wonder if he's going to actually be at the base here. Probably not. Usually they're like out in the wilderness. Oh, there he is. Oh no. He threw a sleep gas grenade. Ah! Damn it. I don't know where he ran off to. I should have brought uh, D Dog, he might have helped. Where's the dude? Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, wait, he's right there. Analysis. That's the target. I remember him. He was off base during the attack nine years ago. Bring him home, boss. Oh, well, mine did go off. Uh, I guess it did. I remember if you could stun him by normal means. Oh, I hate when they do this. Where the heck did he go? Yeah, 
Yeah, I should have brought D-Dog. It would have been a lot easier to do this. There he is. Oh, come on. Did I stun him with mine, though? I don't think so. Oh, wait. I could put... That's right. I totally forgot I had the sniper rifle. My bad. I think I could just put him to sleep with this. Yep, there we go. Easy. <laughs> I wasted all that time for nothing. That's the best way to do it. I got him. <laughs> I totally forgot that I had it. I was thinking, oh, I don't have my trank gun. I can't trank him. I forgot that the sniper rifle is a trank. Side up completed. 